Welcome! In this video I will show you how to make a miniature scale balance. I used a cutting machine to cut some of my pieces, but you can definitely cut it out by hand too. I'm showing you how I cut out the odd triangular shape for the face of the scale. This first piece I'm making is the base of the front and the back of the scale. I'm just using regular paper because I'm just making the pattern first. I'm folding it in half again and I'm laying it on a piece of folded paper to make the pattern for the to trace the pattern out for the next piece. This first piece is going to be a frame that will hold the clear packaging to be the glass. And I realized when I assembled it that this curved part here down at the bottom, I didn't need to, uh, to cut that out. You could leave that solid. Here I have folded the base piece and the frame piece in half to check to make sure they're both the same size or pretty similar, and then trim if needed. And now while still folded, I'm cutting out that line that I drew to become the frame. Here is how the base and the frame piece stack together. I folded the base in half again, and I'm tracing it onto another piece of folded in half paper to create the pattern for the front or the back. I made two different patterns for the front and the back but you could just pick one and do that if you choose to. This first one has a small viewing window for the numbers. And when I looked at real pictures, I noticed that some of them had that facing the front out towards a customer, but then I've also seen it the other way, so it's your choice. And when I say other way, I mean the larger area where you see more of the numbers. Here I had checked the fit with the base piece and I was just trimming to make sure they were the same. Once I was happy that they were the same size, I cut out the little window. Here are the two variations of the front and back that I was talking about. I'm showing you the order that the pieces go in, the base, the frame, and then the front or the back. I cut out a little circle to be a decorative piece on the front. I traced it out onto cardstock, but you could use cereal box. I think I traced two of each piece, but it's really up to you how thick you want it. These pieces I cut on my cutting machine, but the assembly is the same. This is the frame piece. Notice how when I was mentioning earlier that you didn't need to cut out the frame all the way to the bottom. I only cut one of the frame, but on the front and the back pieces I did two layers of each. This is how this side looks so far. I'm gluing another frame piece down to the base piece for the other variation of the front or back. And this is how that side looks. These are just base pieces and I think I glued four or five together, but it really just depends upon how thick you want your scale piece to look. 
and the thickness of your cardstock or cereal box. Now I'm going to glue one of the frame pieces to one side of that base piece that we just glued together. And now I'm gluing the other frame piece to the opposite side of that piece. I glued two layers of the decorative piece together and then I'm going to glue it onto the front and the back of the scale. This is how the frame pieces look glued onto the base piece. I used thin clear packaging to create the little window. I created a template and now I'm tracing it onto the packaging. And this is how it sits into that frame piece. I took a regular piece of paper and I colored it with black sharpie and now I'm just trimming away some little skinny pieces to be the little indicator for both sides. I drew one by hand and also designed the others on the computer for the numbers. And now I'm gluing the indicator on. Make sure not to go too far over to the edge. That's what I did, and my when I put my top piece on, it covered it, so I had to peel it off of there. I held the front piece on to check again to make sure my indicator wasn't covered. And now lay your clear packaging window into the frame. Carefully apply the glue so it doesn't get on your packaging. I noticed that my numbers got a little bit off, but that's okay, it'll work out. This is how each side looks. Now I'm just sanding and softening all of the edges. Painting a thin layer of wood glue, but I wish I would have used Mod Podge instead. I covered the little windows with some paper so I wouldn't get paint on them, and I painted two or three coats, or sponge painted two or three coats of the color. The main base is two layers of foam board. I created this piece with an opening large enough to glue the scale top into it. I did it this way because I figured that would be more glue coverage to hold that top part onto the base. It's four layers thick and then I glued it onto the foam board base. I'm gluing strips of cardstock all the way around the foam board base. I'm sanding all of the sharp edges. I glue skinny strips of cardstock all the way around for the trim. And here's how the main base looks so far. I cut out two different sizes of squares and glued three layers of each size together to create the platform on each platforms on each side of the scale. I put a generous amount of glue in the little hole that's going to hold the scale front and back. I wipe some of the glue away, but not all of it, all the way around 
to give it a smooth finish. I gave it a coat of matte Mod Podge. I glued four small cir circles together to glue on the side that will hold the small table platform. I made sure to center it. I did the same on the opposite side, but I used a little larger of a circle. I sponge painted the base and the two platform table pieces. And here's what we've got so far. Brushing on some black and brown chalk pastel to bring out some of the detail and to age it a little bit and dirty it up some. I had the cap on my diamond glaze, but I noticed it didn't want to come out very well. Does anyone have any tips and tricks for that? I ended up poking it with a needle. And here I'm painting on a layer of the diamond glaze. I'm gluing the tables, platforms on now. I'm not sure what to call them. I'm creating some little feet with some paper quilling. I'm, glue, I'm putting glue on the top of each one. And now I'm painting black on just the sides. They look like little pieces of sushi. I put glue on the end that didn't have glue already and I'm gluing it on to the base. I made some little weights. I lost my footage on how I made the weights, but I did the paper quilling and then I glued a bead on top of each one and painted them. I hope that this was inspiring for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.